الصيدلية من كلية الصيدلة ونبدأ في المحور الأول في دورتنا دور الممارس الصحي خلال تفشي الأوبية مع سعادة الدكتور حماد علي فضل الملم فليتفضل طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه مشكورا للأستاذة جمانة عبد الغفار والشكر لكل أعضاء نادي كسير بكلية الصيدلة على دعوتهم للمشاركة في هذا الموضوع الذي نراه من المواضيع المهمة جدا في هذه الأيام زي ما تفضلت الأستاذة وأنا إن شاء الله حيتكلم عن جزئية The role of health practitioners during disease outbreak Uh, and this is brief about me. I am Dr. Hamad Ali Fadl Mula, Associate Professor of Community and Public Health in Nursing College at Taiba University, Consultant of Community and Public Health, uh, Certified in Infection Prevention and Control, WHO, Member of American Association of Community and Public Health, Instructor of Basic Infection Control for All Specialties Worldwide, Uh, faculty member more than 10 years in teaching of community and public health, infection prevention and control, epidemiology, and infectious diseases. Uh, who is a healthcare practitioner? Uh, the healthcare practitioner is all people engaged in action. Uh, who primary intent is to enhance health either directly or indirectly. And كل من يساعد في تعزيز الصحة للمرضى إذا كان بطريقة مباشرة أو غير مباشرة directly like uh, doctors and nurses because they are contact directly to the patient uh, when they are providing or assessing the patient or uh, providing any health care for the patient or assessing uh, physically uh, or physical assessment for the patient uh, because they are contact direct to the patient and or indirectly like laboratory specialists, radiologists, uh, pharmacists and other uh, health care workers whom they are uh, help in enhancing of the health uh, indirectly through any uh, type of participation. Uh, then we need to know disease outbreak. Uh, disease outbreak is the occurrence of disease cases in excess of normal expectancy according to WHO definition of disease outbreak and usually caused by infection transmitted through person to person contact or from animal to person contact or from the environment or other media. Uh, uh, there are uh, many common outbreaks affected the population in the world, uh, such as gastroenteritis and uh, Clostridium uh, difficile infection, CDI, uh, mesicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MIRZA, uh, multi resistant gram negative bacilli, uh, influenza. Other respiratory illnesses were recently and nowadays is COVID-19. These are common outbreaks that uh, affect the uh, uh, population uh, in the world. Uh, the role of uh, healthcare practitioners during disease diseases outbreak is firstly they uh, must convene an outbreak control team or OCT. Uh, this team uh, is considered to do two main things. Firstly, they uh, must uh, investigate the epidemiological, laboratory, and environmental investigations. And uh, at the same time, they must uh, implement control measures to control the source of infection and to control onward transmission. Uh, this uh, second step, not after the first step, but uh, it must be at the same time. Both of the steps they are running uh, together in the same time. 
uh, who is a member of the outbreak control team. Uh, the outbreak uh, control team must be consist of infection control uh, doctor and microbiologist and uh, infection prevention and control and uh, from uh, nurses. Uh, public health, health agencies representatives. Uh, consultant in charge of patients. Uh, where unit home manager, domestic hotel services managers, uh, the chief executive or uh, the relevant services director, uh, director of nursing, medical director, director of infection prevention and control, occupational health services, and uh, finally, press officers. Those are uh, members of outbreak control team. First step, uh, the healthcare practitioners must uh, build this team and appoint this team from all those members uh, to do what? Uh, the role of our pre-control team is firstly to classify definition, epidemiological, clinical, and laboratory to determine the feature of the disease. Then after that, they will develop hypothesis of exposure and transmission uh, to give this information to population to know how they uh, the disease transmitted and how they can expose her to uh, pathogens to protect themselves. Uh, then uh, uh, they must uh, case finding and descriptive epidemiology define cases in terms of place, time, and person. Uh, place uh, to determine uh, at, at which places it may be state, it may be, it may be a whole country, it may be a specific uh, uh, area in the state. Uh, and uh, in the time wise, they, uh, it may be in summer or winter or in autumn. And, uh, and also in the person, also it may be it affect elderly people, it may be affect children uh, or in gender, it may be affect women or men. Uh, this uh, uh, definition of the cases terms must be uh, identified by the uh, outbreak control team. Uh, also, analytical studies such as case control and cohort studies to, the, to identify mode of transmission. Is it transmitted through air or is it transmitted through contact or uh, it, is, uh, it may be uh, transmitted through droplet? The outbreak control team must make analytical studies to, to determine uh, the type of or the mode of transmission and also to give this information to a uh, population to protect themselves against uh, the transmission of the disease. Uh, also laboratory investigation to know the nature of the pathogen, to know which antibiotic uh, it can affect this uh, pathogen, uh, the weakness and strengths of uh, pathogen and uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, the hot topic is coronavirus. Uh, some studies, they said that it cannot uh, uh, resist uh, high temperature. In high temperature, the pathogen, it will destroy it. So uh, uh, information like this, it can be uh, given to us from the uh, laboratory investigators. Uh, if necessary, environmental investigation will be done. There is some diseases is water porn disease. Uh, we need to take a sample of water and send it to lab to investigate the type of pathogens that uh, in this uh, water uh, to manage it. If necessary, in some diseases, which I mean diseases that transmitted through uh, uh, or uh, disease airborne or regional. 
and also one of uh, the outbreak control team uh, responsibilities is control measures. Uh, and this, it, it depends on outbreak itself, uh, environmental measures to control the source uh, to, 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 to diminish the spread of uh, the, the disease or the outbreak. Uh, first step, we need to, uh, to, uh, to, to stop or to control the source of uh, the disease. Uh, also treating uh, one of the, of the responsibilities, treating and vaccinating of the cases to minimize uh, the spread of the disease. Also uh, the responsibility of uh, our break team is to treat uh, the cases and to vaccinate uh, uh, the cases. Uh, also providing prophylaxis antibiotics. Uh, also to provide infection control measures like isolation of the sick patients. Uh, like uh, now uh, uh, in coronavirus, we, we observe that there is a quarantine or uh, house isolation or hospital isolation for sick people whom they are in vulnerable uh, uh, population like elderly and, uh, and children and people whom they have a, a heart problem or other chronic diseases. They are isolated in the hospitals, but uh, the fit people or young, they are uh, uh, do a house uh, quarantine or house isolation to minimize or, uh, or to, to proc the, the disease transmission chain. Also uh, promoting behavioral change like hand washing, coughing and sneezing etiquette. Uh, this is very important thing because uh, uh, hand washing, uh, uh, the, it minimizes 30% of diarrhea related sickness and about 20% of respiratory infections. And cough and sneezing etiquettes, now I, uh, I read one study published in American Journal of Infection Control. This study uh, relates that 77% of students disregard uh, CDC's uh, Center of Disease Control cough etiquette standards. They will not follow the cough etiquette in standards. This is a study done in uh, school more than 340 something. Uh, this study relates that 77% of the students, they are uh, disregard uh, cough and sneezing etiquette standards. Uh, education, information, and communication. Uh, one of the main uh, responsibilities of outbreak control team is to educate the people and to give them information uh, through a communication uh, methods, either in mass media or in posters or in uh, mobile SMS messages. Uh, they must educate them about the disease, the nature of the disease, the signs and symptoms, the last updates about the disease, and uh, uh, any information that can help them to protect themselves against this disease. Uh, the, uh, the occupational, uh, the outbreak control, control team must be give this information to all populations. And even uh, he, uh, they can help an educational programs in schools, in malls, in any uh, uh, any setting that have uh, many people. Uh, if it is over, if the, the outbreak is over, uh, outbreak control team declare that it is over and write final report 
uh, and uh, give this report or distribute this report through uh, all media to give uh, uh, last updates for the population regarding the outbreak uh, to make life return to uh, be, uh, as before the outbreak. And we will waiting to receive this uh, report about coronavirus in all over the world. Finally, I, I, uh, I try to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the, uh, uh, the all uh, organizer of this workshop, Ixir club members and Dr. Hani Khoja, the vice dean of pharmacy college for their invitation and also uh, great thanks for all uh, panelists uh, Mr. Aladdin Ibrahim, Saudi German Hospital, and uh, Amir uh, Al Ahmadi and Jumana Saleh uh, for their invitation and for their uh, uh, very excellent organization and, and frequently contact and update about this uh, webinar. And the, because they are uh, give us any updates, any uh, contact, uh, and, and I acknowledge them for this. And I hope we will meet again uh, in another chance. Uh, thank you for all. Thank you for all uh, attendees. And I hope they will get some information about uh, the uh, responsibilities of uh, healthcare practitioners during outbreak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. محدثكم عامر الأحمدي المشرف على هذه الدورة المجردة استكمل معكم فقرات دورتنا لهذا اليوم دورة إدارة الأزمات أولا نشكر سعادة الدكتور حماد على ما قدمه من خلال التحدث عن دور الممارس الصحي في تفشي الأوبئة جزاك الله خير الجزاء على مساهمتك القيمة ونبدأ الآن لثاني محاول دورتنا والتي تتحدث عن دور الممارس الصحي خلال الحرب والكوارث الطبيعية مع سعادة الدكتور مؤيد سعود البدراني فليتفضل مشكورا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أحب أعرف بنفسي أول شيء أنا مؤيد البدراني طبيب وعضو في تدريس بكلية الطب أسيستنت بروفيسور في بابليك كلتون بريفنتيف ميديسين أي هاف ماستر إن ديزاستر مانجمنت ذاتس واي أي وونت تو جيف ذيس ليكشر ذا ليكشر إز أباوت ذا رول أوف هيلث براكتيشنر ديورينج وور أند ناتشورال ديزاستر وي هاف إن إكزامبل لايك فولكينوز إيرث كويك أند هوريكينز Uh, the outline of the lecture, I will explain what, what disaster mean and phase of disaster and emergency management, who's the responder and health, uh, what, what the health practitioner uh, as, uh, as they are part of responder and the classification of disaster issues uh, in disaster management for the uh, health practitioner. Assault Wadi? Wadi. Uh, so we uh, we want firstly to uh, differentiate between the emergency disaster and catastrophe. Uh, emergency. Uh, I give an example for emergency. If a single family house has a fire uh, as an accident, so we call it an emergency. We have realignment of the priorities and we have this the standards to deal with that uh, emergency. So uh, in the other term, disaster, we can, for example, if the fire consume uh, a, a whole block inside, for example, a certain zone, if the whole block has a fire, so we call it a disaster uh, as the local resources inadequate. So the fire station, for example, they may need uh, help from the, uh, the next zone or from the other zone. For example, if they if uh, help they can get from, and, and, and next fire station. Uh, 
the cast catastrophe uh, here we mean the advocate resources and available so for example if there uh, several communities is affected that require mass evacuation and reconstruction so we can we can call it catastrophe uh, regarding to the phases of the disaster disaster has uh, started with three phases uh, phase one which is the pre-disaster before the event and we well, i will explain why we define the disaster into phases uh, we have incident uh, which is the event the next phase and post incident where, where the recovery is happening the phases of emergency management here we can apply those phases of emergency management in the phases of disaster we have the preparedness uh, we when we talk about preparedness here we want to make sure that all resources and services which may be needed to cope with the effect are rapidly deployed here we call it the planning or preparedness uh, the second stage of the uh, emergency management, which is the response that it should be immediate and the action should be taken immediately after the impact. For example, if earthquake is happening, so we need the immediate action from the uh, all responders, including the health practitioner. Uh, we have the recovery phase after uh, the uh, disaster, uh, we call it the coordinated process of supporting disaster affected community in re reconstructing physical structure and resourcing the emotional, social, and economic and physical well-being of the community. Mitigation, uh, that phase usually it can help in the pre-disaster pre phase, while if we want to reduce the consequences uh, of the disaster in all phases, I mean here the regulatory as well as the uh, physical measure that uh, need in order to make sure that emergencies can be prevented. For example, co uh, making uh, uh, calls for the building uh, and make the strengthening the building uh, um, uh, to prevent, for example, those buildings from uh, uh, destruction during earthquake. Here an example for the phases of emergency management. Started with mitigation. Usually, before disaster, we have two phases: the preparedness, preparedness phase. Uh, I mean, the emergency management phase, which call it preparedness and mitigation. Uh, this is uh, during or before a disaster is happening. Here, we need, for example, uh, the follow preventive laws and regulation, implement codes and standard, zoning requirement. Those kind of things we call it mitigation. And if we have uh, good standards and laws and regulation, so it can prevent uh, the, if, uh, it, we, it will reduce the effects of the disaster. Preparedness here, we need to make our resources and services uh, available. For example, a stock disaster support kit, uh, mutual agreement between the countries or between the cities, for example, and preparing uh, a shelter to be ready if something is happening, especially in the vulnerable areas. Uh, the uh, response phase, this is this phase is uh, one of the emergency management phase and it's important phase, which is mandatory, uh, mandatory phase as we need the uh, 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 an action here, an immediate action. It starts uh, with the search and rescue, identify affected people, uh, assist initial damage, uh, initial damage and uh, provide the humanitarian assistance for the uh, population who need those uh, humanitarian assistance. Recovery phase here, we need to rebuild and remove the construction for uh, remove the destruction, for example, the priest removal and uh, building the city uh, again or building the zone again, infrastructure uh, reconstruction and resort, uh, restore the likelihood, livelihood, I'm sorry. So <clears throat> when we talking about the disaster, so we need to to classify the population during the disaster. We have the authorities, the individual who has the authority to take a decision. Those we call, we call them the authorities. And we have a population of responders and part of population responders is the uh, uh, health practitioner. We have population at risk. I mean here the, the individual who hit it by the disaster. We have the population at large, I mean, for example, they are not hit it exactly the disaster, but they are neighbor, for example, to that disaster or within they live within the same country. We have special need population. Those are the population always we need to think about when we're talking about the disaster. Responders, uh, the population of responder here, they are uh, the important part because the important part of population because they are uh, they taking the response 
So any specialized, uh, tra specialized training individual who has uh, responsibility to be the first and assist during the sense of emergency or a disaster, we call it responder. They are uh, not limited to the health practitioner. It includes law enforcement, civil defense officer, paramedics, emergency department personnel. Uh, Sometimes the soldier may need their help and firemen and uh, uh, those are examples. And they are not limited to, to this group, but they maybe go beyond. It depends on the kind of, uh, depends the kind of the disaster. So <clears throat> the health practitioner as the Dr. Hamad, he defined the health practitioner before, all people who are engaged in the action whose primarily intent to enhance the health. Uh, this is definition by WHO. So uh, any individual we can consider it a uh, health practitioner if they deal with the health, uh, whatever in the health sector or outside the health sector, for example, a uh, physician who is employed in mining company for occupational health assessment, we call them even a health practitioner, even uh, outside the hospital or uh, outside the health uh, sector. Uh, the next topic, which is the classification of disaster, we classify the disaster either natural disaster or man-made disaster. Uh, natural disaster, we can divide them uh, based on the nature of the disaster itself. We, for example, we have a meteorological disaster, to topographical disaster, and environmental disaster. Meteorological, anything deal with uh, the environment itself uh, outside the earth crust. So, for example, the floods, tsunamis, hurricane, uh, those are depending, for example, in winds. So we call it meteorological disaster, topographical disaster, uh, any disaster that it's happening from the uh, earth crust itself, for example, volcanoes, earthquake and landslide. Those are an example of topographical disaster. Environmental disaster, we have, uh, uh, for example, the global warming. We, ca we consider it the environmental disaster. Uh, if ra radiation, for example, we call it also environmental disaster. The man-made disaster, we, it classified into technological, industrial, and warfare. Technological, for example, if transport failure is happening or a fire, intentional fire, we call it uh, man-made disaster. And uh, industrial, for example, if something related to the industry, if a chemical spill is happening from the country or radioactive spill, we call it industrial. Warfare from, uh, for example, the war or terrorism, so we call it the man. Those are part of man made disaster. Again, the natural disaster, uh, we, we call it the natural disaster because they are categorized as their onset. For example, some, some of them acute, some of them are gradual. This is the, one of the characteristic of natural disaster. They uh, are uh, predictable, usually they're predictable. So uh, the geologist can, for example, uh, assist or they know about the vulnerabilities. Uh, they usually it's happening a cluster in specific geographic area. It can it cannot be preventable, so unpreventable because uh, it's a natural. Most of them uncontrollable, and usually they have long term effect in terms of the uh, economic as well as the psychological impacts, uh, which is has a long term effect. For volcanoes, for example, is an example for the natural disaster, uh, volca vol volcanic activities in involving explosive eruption or flow or rock fragment uh, in a various combination with a various combination of foot, cold, wet or dry uh, waves. So the volcanic hazard usually vary in severity depends on the size as well as on the extent of the eruption. And uh, the important also factor, if this uh, volcanic, volcanic activity is happening in the populated, highly populated, or non-highly, even the populated area, so uh, it can have a hazard on the community. Also, uh, depending on the location of volcano, there is a different alert level are used to provide the volcano warning and emergency information regarding the volcanic arrest and eruption. Uh, the volcanoes, they have uh, an effect on the lives of people, so they have a, a, a health outcome, so uh, they can mm, affect the life of people, and also it can cause morbidities. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, immediate acute uh, irritation by the, by the emission of the gases that 
come with the volcanic volcanic eruption. Uh, it can affect the eyes, it can affect nose, skin, and upper ways. So corneal abrasion is common, and also extirpation of uh, asthma-like symptom or asthma symptom, and it can eventually result in asphyxia. Also, laceration from the direct hit to the volcanic eruption, laceration, thermal injuries, trauma, and there is uh, also the long-term effect uh, from the, uh, the areas that highly populated and the volcanoes is happening near them. So an anxiety and depression or post-traumatic disorder, whatever in the victim or their relatives. So uh, as, you, uh, as a health care practitioner, it depends on the level of authority. Uh, they, have, they can have a role in the volcanoes. For example, they can collaborate with emergency management specialists to develop effective warning schemes participate in the volcano planning workshop, emergency response exercise and drills. They, they can also share in preparing educational materials, especially in, in the areas that is affordable for volcanoes. They provide in the community with a fact sheet, booklet, video programs, and uh, also they can help in the exercise and drills for uh, designed area for evacuation and, uh, evacu and they help in evacuate when indicated. They also provide the emergency air monitoring equipment for detecting toxic gas because uh, uh, knowing the what kind of toxic gas that the individual has been exposed to it, it can uh, change the management plan. Also, the stockpile and distribute the mask, eye shield, or goggle uh, uh, can be a part of the role of the health practitioner in during the volcanoes. Next, we talk about the uh, next example, which is uh, earthquakes. It's earthquake is a sudden slippage or movement, a portion of earth crust accompanied by serious vibration. After shock or similar or less intensity can follow the earthquake, uh, there is more uh, financial impact. Uh, it's happening in the industrial countries, but more injuries uh, has been reported in undeveloped countries. Uh, earthquake, uh, one of its, uh, I mean, the, the uh, geological characteristic, it ha result in a secondary disaster, for example, catastrophic tsunami, landslide, all those kind of disaster, it can be happening secondary to earthquake. Uh, this is injuries from earthquake are very according to the type of house building. So uh, I think here in the uh, prevention or we call it mitigation phase. So we need to build uh, code, uh, we need to have a code for those building in order to prevent or to minimize the death and injuries during earthquakes, especially in the areas that vulnerable for earthquake. Also the other uh, variable for uh, increasing the death and injuries, the time uh, of the day of occurrence. Here, I mean the time of day of occurrence, sometime uh, most of people are at work uh, and usually the working uh, working building, uh, they have the codes and regulation more than the houses. Uh, that's why, and also the population density within the area of earthquake, uh, also it can increase or decrease the death and injuries. Earthquake is a, uh, considered a significant global concern. The primary uh, health concern injuries uh, arising from the structural collapse, most of injuries among individual trapped at the time of earthquake, cuts, broken bones, crush injuries, dehydration from being trapped in rubble. Those are a common consequences of uh, hitting by the earthquake. And we'll know when prevention strategies to prevent the building from the collapse, as I mentioned before, the mitigation phase. And there is recognized need to develop a better rescue st strategies. Uh, this is for the preparedness phase for retrie retrieving the individual from the collapse building. Uh, the instruction that provided for the health practitioner for the earthquake, they can share in the care of casualties in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake. Typically here we focus on orthopedic and soft tissue trauma, including the management of fracture, uh, earthquake drill to practice emergency procedure. They can, uh, the health practitioners share uh, in earthquake drills, especially in the areas that are vulnerable for earthquake and provision of emergency medical care to those who seek acute care in the first three and five days after earthquake. Uh, this is a mandatory to, to minimize the injuries and mortalities. Continuity of care 
for those who lose access to prescription and home care and other medical necessities. Those are the vulnerable population and special need population. They need to be taken care by the health practitioner. Surveillance for, we again, we come back to the communicable disease and injury because they are, uh, uh, as the environmental impact of the earthquake, communicable disease like uh, a vector-borne disease uh, usually is coming uh, uh, as an outbreak. So we need the surveillance program, including the location and severity of injury, disposition of patient and follow up the contact information. Next, we talk about the hurricanes. Hurricane, the primary health hazard from the hurricane uh, or cyclone usually lies in the risk of drowning from uh, the storm surge associated with landfill or landfall of the storm. So most deaths uh, associated with hurricane are drowning death. Secondary hazard uh, exit from injuries from flying debris due to high winds. Uh, those are the major uh, causes of the injury during hurricanes. Here also we need to make sure during hurricane for the healthcare uh, providers to share and conduct a need assessment of affected communities and including a few public health infrastructure, establish active and passive surveillance system for death injuries and illnesses, uh, educate the public about maintaining safe and uh, adequate supply of food and water, establish environment control. And here, uh, when I talk about the environmental control, control from the public health perspective, it can be applied to the uh, earthquake and as well as the, for the uh, volcanoes. Um, again, we come back to the infectious disease. It can usually because the environmental of environmental impact, uh, infectious disease, especially the uh, vector borne disease, it can uh, be uh, a part or tetanus, for example. So we need the surveillance program and we need to monitor those infectious disease and we need uh, stockpiling for the immunization, uh, for example, uh, the tetanus. The Institute of uh, the multi, uh, multi system, uh, multi system clinic or multi system, uh, I mean, multi specialties uh, surgery for the injury control program. And we need to establish the protective measure against the potential disease vectors, monitor the potential release of hazardous material because the release of hazardous material, for example, the chemical spill that is coming from the uh, industries is a common, uh, is commonly associated with a hurricane and ensure the evacuation plan for people and especially those with special needs. Uh, 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 they need the nursing home and hospital and home care. We need to ensure the evacuation plan can cover them. And we need to work with uh, local communities to improve the building code, developing, uh, improve the design for the wind safety. We finished talking about the uh, uh, an example for the natural disaster. So now we need to go for the man-made disaster. Man-made disaster unpredictable can spread uh, across geographical boundaries. Maybe sometimes unpreventable, and they may have limited physical damage. Not like a, a natural disaster, limited physical damage, but they have long-term effects in terms of the financial loose or the uh, traumatic, the uh, post-traumatic disorder, I mean, psychological uh, traumas from the man-made disaster. Uh, war, an example of the uh, man-made disaster, wars perhaps the, the greatest of all man-made hazards having resulted in hundreds uh, of millions of, uh, of deaths uh, throughout the historical record. Planning is completely dependent, uh, de completely dependent on the different types of weapons because in the war, sometimes they use the directed energy weapon. Uh, the uh, also uh, so the directed energy weapons, for example, they have special plan that is completely different from explosive devices. Uh, biological and chemical weapon, they have also uh, a different story, nuclear and radiological weapon. And even we, if we talk about radiological weapon, we need to differentiate between uh, a high, uh, high resolution, high resolution radiological weapon versus the low resolution radiological weapon. The most common injuries for, for a survivor of explosion is penetrating and plant trauma. Uh, plus lung also can be fatal among the initial survivor. 
and plast injuries can occur in any part of, uh, part of body system, including auditory, digestive, circulatory, uh, nervous system, extremities, renal, respiratory system, all of those systems can be affected with the plast uh, injury because we could not uh, determine where the polyte can go. So uh, the role of healthcare uh, uh, practitioner during war, they, they provide the emergency service and medical care to the victims, activate the health alert network, conduct the hazard assessment, uh, identifying the medical institution and personnel who can provide the emergency care uh, will be required, including uh, because, uh, as I said, different system can be affected. So we may need, need ENT doctor, for example, for etiological assessment uh, uh, and auditory, uh, audiometry. And uh, we need the trauma and uh, the trauma surgeons and uh, the plastic surgeon for a burn uh, to be ready, uh, the, also the instrument and the facilities for hyper, hyper uh, peric oxygen chamber and so forth. We need to uh, establish a victim identification registry because during war, even uh, those uh, identification registry can be lost at any time. The common issues that facing uh, the uh, natural and as well as the man-made disaster, those are the common issues I try to gather them. Uh, uh, the started with a site uh, site selection. I mean, I mean the site personnel. The site personnel. Uh, we need to, for example, establishing the medical control command and uh, coordination and communication uh, are very vital. So we need uh, a site uh, arrangement and to determine uh, uh, each person or each individual role. Uh, medical management is one of the important part of the. Uh, disaster management, we have, we know usually uh, disaster accompanied with mass casualties. So we need to have the system that ready for a mass casualties and the triage system. Uh, also, we need to consider the psychological impact of this disaster because the psychological impact of disaster need planning for the psychological intervention uh, as the usually the disaster is accompanied with a long-term effect or long-term uh, behavioral changes. Uh, ethical issues and liability issues uh, during the provision of emergency medical care, uh, usually it needs to be considered and those uh, are a, a separate lecture, we can provide it later. Disaster surveillance and information system, how we develop the surveillance and information system, this is a topic and uh, especially uh, surveillance can be applicable to communicable as well as non-communicable, uh, uh, for example, the injuries, the, um, uh, the traumas, all those kind, it needs a surveillance program and we need to determine what type of exposure that the individual has been exposed to it. Uh, also, uh, disaster communication, and here we mean by the disaster communication between the responders, uh, healthcare practitioner, they, to have a common language, for example, of communication. And, and that mean the language, uh, uh, the verbal language, I mean the language that uh, all the team can understand it during the operation of the disaster. Uh, and also the common language, we need to share our language uh, with the uh, other responders so we can uh, share our uh, uh, responding and we can respond uh, uh, timely. Uh, also the disaster communication has another part, we communicating with a lay individuals. So the lay individual, we need uh, a special type or we can coordinate those communication uh, for them. Also one of the issues in, uh, uh, in the disaster, the displacement of disaster victims. Sometimes we need the mass shelter, so we need to uh, shelter management. So we need to have the organized uh, team and we need to have uh, areas that ready for sleeping area, sanitation, water food handling, special care for children and elderly, also uh, the special care for uh, health need individual. We need the health services. For, uh, for those shelters. Uh, also, one of the issues during uh, that can face the healthcare practitioner during the disaster hit, 
the operational com components uh, and the operation component it uh, consists uh, it has a concept so we need to have effective practical authorized robots and incorporated and this uh, operation need to be incorporated in law uh, and plans and regulations so here i mean the uh, uh, this operation to be uh, authoritative for example uh, for uh, it has uh, authority by the law so we can uh, they have the right action and uh, uh, authoritative action i mean here uh, we need the personnel we need the adequate numbers uh, trained uh, authorized uh, for time and duty uh, those are two component are very important also we need the equipment to be available and ready infrastructure time phase logistic and we need the communication uh, prepared uh, population so, so, social tool in place to be ready and practice and revision for evolving need. We need the exercise as well as we need the drills. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening for this lecture. And I would like to thank the Nadi Exir, Kulita Saidala, Mustafa Saudi Al Almani, for uh, inviting me for to, to, to give this lecture. كان معنا الدكتور الفاضل مؤيد البدراني لتوضيح أهمية الممارس الصحي خلال الحرب والكوارث الطبيعية جزيت خيرا دكتورنا العزيز على ما بذلت شاكرين لك مساهمتك القيم وهنا نصل إلى آخر محاورنا لهذا اليوم والتي تتحدث عن اللقاحات ومراحل التصنيع واستخداماتها مع سعادة الدكتور أحمد جلال الضفيري فليتفضل مشكورا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد في البداية نحب نشكر الأخوة المنظمين كذلك نشكر الزملاء المتحدثين الدكتور حماد والدكتور مؤيد الله يجزاهم ألف خير كذلك نشكر الحضور وإن شاء الله نقدم لهم مادة إن شاء الله مفيدة لهم طبعا موضوعنا اليوم هو أو موضوعي في الأخص هو manufacturing of vaccines. There is no voice these days above the voice of COVID-19. لا صوت يعلو فوق صوت مرض COVID-19. And the big questions, I think the biggest questions in this year in 2020 is when we will get the vaccine for COVID-19. هو سؤال المليون. متى سيكون لقاح COVID-19 جاهز للاستخدام لعامة الناس؟ إن شاء الله. في هذه المحاضرة, in this lecture, you will have some background of vaccinations, We'll talk about some history, some examples from the history for the other diseases. I learned you will know how the vaccines work. And you will learn or you will identify the phases of manufacturing of vaccine. So you will learn how many phases there are. What is the timeline for each phase? How long it takes? Muddat or al water mustaqraq Adatan in normal condition to have a vaccine for any infectious disease. But here we have a specific. We have a pandemic. We have global pandemic. We have COVID-19. All the world is affected, as you know. And you will have an idea also 
by the end of this lecture is how close we are to discover a vaccine for COVID-19. Ivan, you will learn there is no one type of vaccine. There are many types of vaccines, at least nine types of vaccines. The history of vaccination, when it was started, the first documented vaccination was in the 10th century by Chinese, as you can see here in the picture. What they do for the small box, the small box is an uh, Arabic, the Arabic who are Marab al Judei. What they do, the doctor at that time, before like uh, 1000 years ago, they collected scabs, scabs, viruses the, that causes the disease from infected people with mild cases of small box. Then allow them to dry. After that, they ground them into powder, wrap them in the cotton powder, and then pack them in a pipe. And last step, they blow the, the virus or these scabs in the nose of uninfected people. And at the end, what they noticed, these people will develop immunity against the small uh, box. At that time, they don't use word of vaccination. They use another word. They call this process as inoculation. And Dr. Edward, Edward Jenner, he came in 18th century. He's the one who discovered the vaccination for smallpox, the Marad al Judari, in 1796. How he did that, or, or how he did discover the vaccine? Okay. Briefly, the story started when he noticed that the milkmen, the people who work with the cow, they were contracted another disease. It's called at that time cowpox. So this disease was characterized by having a mild symptoms. So what was he thinking to do? He collected some pus. He took some pus from their hands. Musabin Hadol. And he scratches a boy, or eight years boy, and he waited to see if this boy will be affected by smallpox or not. At the end, he, the boy, he didn't have any small smallpox uh, uh, symptoms. So, in this idea, on this way, he discovered the vaccine vaccine or vaccination and first time the word of vaccine or vaccination was being used because it came from the cow variola and their language they call it variola so vaccine came from this word so the first time the vaccination was used and first by Dr. Uh, uh, Jenner, uh, uh, Edward Jenner in 1796. Let's take the small box as an example to show the importance of finding a vaccine. Here we have an example of small box. Again, is Marad al Judari. Before, in the left side, in the red color, is no vaccine available or before the discovering the vaccine for this disease. And the red color represents uh, the time after discovering the vaccine, the small vaccine, the uh, small vaccine for the smallpox disease in 1796. As you can see, the red line, you see like high cases of infected people before the time of vaccine dis uh, discovering. After that, we can see a big reduction after people get vaccinated. So we can see the number of infected people decreased until they reached in 19, 
1980 سنه 1980 when the who declared that global eradication eradication means destroy the disease معناته انه لا يوجد مرض اسمه الجدري any more بفضل الله ثم بفضل هذا الفاكسين او هذا الفاكسينيشن هنا يوضح لنا اهميه وجود فاكسين للسيطره على الانتشار انواع هذه انتشار انواع هذه الامراض another example was polio polio هو شلل الاطفال the vaccine for polio was discovered in 1955 as you can see no vaccine available on the left and the number of cases was increased by real and after the vaccination was found or was discovered and we can see the reduction in the number of the cases and in 1979 the usa was declared polio free لا يوجد مرض شلل الاطفال في الولايات المتحده الامريكيه the third example مثلس in the United States هنا المثال مثلس اللي هو مرض الحصبة the vaccine was introduced in the USA in 1963 again before the vaccine we can see the high number of infected people after the vaccine discovered the number decreased and it's restricted now so these are some examples for other infectious diseases to show the importance of finding or discovering vaccine to first restrict or يقلل من إصابة الناس. Second thing, maybe there is a possibility to eradicate. So to لإنهاء هذا المرض مثل ما شفنا in small box diseases. Vaccination. Let's define what's the meaning of vaccine. Vaccine is a biological preparation that provides active acquired immunity to a particular infectious disease. Vaccines do not cure diseases. They are not a treatment. They, their main job is to prevent that disease. So there is a difference between vaccine and antiviral. So again, vaccine do not or don't cure. Widespread immunity. انتشار المناعة بين الناس بفضل هذه الفاكسينيشن is responsible for the worldwide eradication and restriction of diseases. Again, we know now the importance of finding vaccination for infectious diseases is saved lives. For example, in 2000, 12, the WHO, منظمة الصحة العالمية, estimated that vaccination prevent 2.5 million deaths each year. We are talking about some diseases we think it's very easy to control, but unfortunately, unfortunately because of the economic, sometimes economic issues, for example, like in Africa, many countries because of you know because of the war because of the barbarity they don't receive the vaccines they need now there is only 28 licensed vaccine are available for preventable infectious diseases only 28 what are these 28 these are example of some diseases 
Some of them because of bacteria or they are bacteria source and other of these diseases, for example, like hepatitis, uh, it's a virus cause. So cholera, for example, bacteria cause cholera. So this slide shows the 28 licensed vaccines are available now. Unfortunately, we are lucky to be in, you know, in a country that make this vaccine available for everyone in this land from we born until we get all the vaccination we need. So some as again, again and again, you know, we think sometimes it's not important uh, uh, topic and we don't feel it, no. It's very important. For example, now there are some countries around us because of the wars in the past, they had this vaccination. Now, because of the war, because of the economic issues, they don't have this you know, vaccination. So vaccination, we are lucky to have these kind of vaccinations. Another big topic, today is how vaccines work. Briefly or simply, weak germs or weak viruses or bacteria usually injected. And these bacteria or germs are either killed or weakened, or sometimes they use small part of the germ that can cause the disease. And this is the step number one, injected the killed or weakened germ to, the, to our bodies. The second step, what happened, antibodies will be created. These bacteria or viruses or germs, let's call them germs, will stimulate our bodies to produce uh, the antibodies in the, you know, and the green and the green color, as you can see, to attack these germs, so these viruses or these bacteria, whatever it is. After this process, the immunity will be developed. So we will be protected in the case of we, you know, get infected with the disease in the future, for example. So here, just to show you briefly, the idea of how the vaccines work. Injected germs, injected the virus, weakened or killed, and our bodies were reacted, react with this action until the immunity develop and become ready and stronger. So as we said, فوق الصوت COVID-19 when, when we will be getting the vaccine for COVID-19. So the race to develop and approve and manufacture of COVID-19 vaccine is fluid and very urgent. This is up-to-date information. There are currently 213 vaccines in development for COVID-19 to this day. Maybe tomorrow the numbers will be changed. And all of these 200 vaccine in development, they are fall into nine different product categories or platforms. As I said in the introduction, there is no one type vaccine. You will learn about them, you know, at the end of this lecture, inshallah. Here now, this number is the most important number. At this time, 38 vaccines are in one of four phases of clinical testing. So if we will be getting a vaccine, so it, it should be one of these 30. Eight. Timeline is critical, is important. Typically, the first line, 
typical vaccine development in normal condition في الظروف الطبيعية في الوقت ال the time required to develop or to discover a vaccine usually normally takes around 10 years it's very long time nobody want to wait 10 years until the COVID-19 goes away so what is going on now these days all the prediction based on the funding the money are spending in the research and the effort of the most of the countries because it's a global pandemic problem you know the, the war, all the world is united now so possible COVID-19 vaccine development the expertise expecting it could take 12 to 18 months and the time is started from january 2020 not with the time of discovering of identifying the the the, the virus that caused covid 19 sars cov 2 no from january the starting from january 2020 when the genetic sequence of the virus that causes COVID-19 was published. لما تعرفوا على genetic sequence اللي هو DNA والRNA والأمور هذه لما تعرفوا عليه based on this genetic sequence they can develop or discover a, a appropriate vaccine vaccine مناسب So Normally, typical condition to, to develop a vaccine, to discover a vaccine takes around 10 years. Possible COVID-19 vaccine should, might take 12, 18 months, inshallah. Stages of development. There are four main stages in order to develop any drug in general and vaccine one of these drugs. Stage one called in vitro and in vivo testing or in another word is called pre-clinical studies. What do we mean by pre-clinical studies? We mean that research are being done in cell culture or in animals after that in phase two the clinical trial will start when they can use human volunteers also the phase two the human testing or clinical trial is divided into three main phases phase one Phase two, phase three. If it go through and it succeed, it will go to the government agencies such as FDA, to get approval. If they get the approval, and this called, you know, phase three. If they get approval, so the vaccine or the drug will be ready for marketing. الدواء يصبح جاهزا للتسويق والبيع والdistribution التوزيع. Surveillance phase four is very important. What do we mean by phase four? We'll, we'll talk about that in details. But here, you know, after you know, the FDA declare that this vaccine is good to prevent the COVID-19, for example, you know, after that, because the number of patients will be using the, 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 the this vaccine will be billions, milliards, three milliards in Nasba. At that time, you know, some side effect could be a beer. يعني لأنه وز... لأنه وسعنا دائرة الاستخدام different condition uh, different countries ممكن يكون في أعراض جانبية ما ظهرت معنا خلال 
in the clinical studies. So again, how many phases? If somebody asks you how many phases, how many stages for development, you will see four. You will say four stages, four main stages. Let's talk in details about these stages. So as we say, phase one, it's called preclinical phases. What happened here to collect data to support visibility and safety? أول خطوة اللي هي visibility اللي هي الجودة اللي معرفة جودة الدواء and safety هل الدواء هذا ال compound new compound is worth to do the research to continue the research هو مناسب لحقق نتائج مبدئية على ال animals على ال cell culture نكمل الطريق ولا stop here and as we said, they, they recruited non-human testing like animal and cell culture. Khalaya lil abhath wa kadalik animals, hayawanat. Minham monkeys, mumkiniko monkeys, mumkiniko rat, mumkiniko mice, whatever. Uh, the aim of this step, and one of the aim of this step also is to evaluate toxic and pharmacological effects. Sumia, well, faalia, halua faal, halua sumi. Normally occurs before human testing can begin. We said that in the previous slide. It's you know it's called preclinical. Preclinical, no human uh, volunteers. So this called again phase one. The phase two, as you remember, here when the recruiting people uh, started, so it's divided into three phases. This is phase one of clinical trials. So as you can see from the pictures, the recruiting, the people started, okay, the small study of healthy people, it's around 20 to 100 uh, people. Again, what do they do here? They again to evaluate safety, amount and immune response at different doses. They, they try to see the safety of the new vaccine in different doses. Typically, takes one to two years. Adatan, step hadi ta'khud min sana ila sanatim. But for COVID-19 trials, expected to take three months. Al-waqt al-mutawakka bisabab jaihat corona bikun aqal bikthir l'anu hadaf iktishaf الباكسينز هو هدف لكل المنظمات وكل الدول في الوقت الراهن. Phase two clinical phase two from clinical trials. As you can see from the picture, the number of people are being recruited increased from 100 to 300. What they do, they further evaluate safety and efficacy and inform optimal dose and vaccine schedule. Here they decide what is the dose should be. Ivan, the vaccine schedule. What do they mean by vaccine schedule? Vaccine, some vaccine you need to take it only for one time. There are some vaccines you need to take it twice. There are some other vaccines for some uh, or particular diseases you need to take it three times, three injection. For example, hepatitis B, you need to get three shots for hepatitis B. So in this stage, they will decide what is the dose will be used, the optimal dose, and the vaccine schedule. Again, typically takes two to three years. But for COVID-19, trials expected to take eight months. Clinical trial phase three. Again, from the pictures, the number of volunteers will be increased. 
until they reach thousands. Here they use, use thousands of volunteers. Further, evaluate safety and efficacy. Some side effects because, you know, in the marhala al because of the small groups of volunteers, some side effects will not appear. Some side effects will not appear. إلا مع الأعداد الكبيرة من البيشنت أو من الناس المستخدمين للدواء. So that's one of the goal why they increase the number of patient from phase to another phase. Typically takes two to four years, but for the COVID-19 trials, maybe combined, you know, maybe combined with phase two. This is very important information. Because they need to accelerate the discovering of COVID-19, they get some permission to combine phases together. For example, they could some companies will combine phase one and phase two. Some com other companies can combine phase two and phase, uh, phase three in order to speed up or to accelerate the surveillance of COVID-19. Vaccine. Then this is the phase three. We call it, we call it reg regulatory review. When the government agency reviews trial data and licensing application information before approval. For example, FDA to raja' the applications. Uh, I don't want to say, you know, I, I'm trying uh, it's 30 minutes, you know, once I started, I'll try to not take a for a long time, but you know, okay, I will try to speed up. It can happen while manufacturing has started. Mumkin atna at tasni, mumkin unu atna and tibar al approval, or tasri, mumkin yab tabda sharikat with tasni and adwiya in order to accelerate to speed up the discovering the vaccine. Typically it takes one to two years. But for COVID-19, expected to take a few months. This is called phase four, it's post-marketing, post-approval, to monitor the effectiveness in real-world condition. Some symptoms will be appear if you have a larger or we have real-world condition. Testing became, began after vaccine has been released to public. So, the question now, once a vaccine is approved, do we get it right away? Okay, صرحوا الآن هذا هذا الفاكسين جاهز. هل يوصلنا على طول؟ متى نستخدم؟ نستخدم الشهر هذا ولا الشهر الجاي ولا الشهر بعد سنة؟ هذا سؤال مهم. There is something called early manufacturing. Early manufacturing, talking about manufacturing, we're talking about the tasni. For example, here we have non-ideal case. What do we mean by non-ideal case? Developer manufactures mass quantity of a vaccine. vaccine, but does not get approval. approval Leaving the public without a vaccine and resources put into manufacture lost. الناس لم تأخذ أو لم تتحصل على الفاكسين وكذلك خسروا ماديا هذه الشركة هذه الشركة non ideal case call it non ideal case. There is another case called good case when developer a شركة gets fast approval but has not manufactured enough of vaccine to distribute in mass quantities. حصلوا على approval ولكن بنفس الوقت ما كانوا يصنعون كميات كبيرة من هذا الفاكسين. ف what will happen? The public must wait longer for more vaccine to become available. You need more time or the developer or شركة needs more time to uh, manufacture or to sign these vaccines. So we need to wait for a longer time. So what is the best case? The best case when developers get fast approval. When the company gets approval from the FDA, 
and has been concurrently manufacturing the vaccine during clinical trials. At the same time, when they were waiting to get the approval from the governmental agency or the Makano Integron and the Hsulon Al Tisrih Mil FDA, for example, Kano is Sanun Al Adwiel and Mutawakaid and no Mumkin and Wijim will approve her for a wakt. Fakano, they will, will be ready or they are ready. Once they get the approval, they have the enough quantities or large quantities of vaccine to be distributed. The vaccine is now ready to distribute in mass quantities. So again, early manufacturing is very important if we need to accelerate the use of COVID-19 vaccine. Type of vaccines, again, you will learn now there are more one type of a vaccine. As you can see here, the syringe is represented. The different color will represent different uh, vaccine type. For example, the purple represented the type of inactivated uh, virus vaccine, inactivated virus. The green color represents live attenuated virus. Orange protein subunit, DNA based in blue, RNA based in red, non uh, replicating viral in green, non replicating viral in pink or light pink, uh, dark blue virus like particle, and other vaccines in, you know, in, in, uh, in brown color. And as you can see, this syringe represents different uh, vaccine types and they. Uh, uh, shows that uh, which which clinical trials these uh, 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 vaccines reach to. Another important information is leading candidates. These are some examples of some vaccination are being developed or uh, uh, developed. These are just some examples. For example, University, most of us heard about that, University of Oxford, AstraZeneca, you know, in phase three. And they use what type? See the different colors here is they use non-replicating viral vector. So another example, uh, Sinovac Institute, it's a Chinese company, Wuhan, also Chinese, Beijing, and all Chinese, the three Chinese companies, also in the phase three, and they use the purple color. What is the purple color? It's an activated virus. Moderna is another common company as well. They use the pink one is RNA-based vaccine type, and uh, et cetera, and et cetera. And so the conclusion of this slide is, you know, you need to know there are different type of vaccines. It's not only one type of vaccines. Here are some definitions. I will just read it, you know, uh, uh, briefly and simply inactivated virus. What do we mean by inactivated virus? They consisted of virus grown in culture and then killed as a means to reduce virulence. Virulence is the ability to infect and cause harms and thus prevent infection from the vaccine one benefit, it, they can be given to people with weakened immune system. Examples Aleha include, example, okay. Examples include polio, and influenza vaccine. This is the first type. You see, you just uh, saw that some companies, some Chinese companies working uh, to uh, develop a, a uh, a vaccine uh, with inactivated uh, virus. So it's about killed virus, injected people with that to develop the vaccine. This is the first type. The second type, live attenuated virus. Live attenuated virus, it's in contrast to inactivated virus. These vaccines also whole virus, virus camel, are, are live to elicit a strong immune response, but weaken to reduce virulence. Virus camel, walakin, weakened, mubaf. Examples include those of mislis, mumps, and tuberculosis. Hadi ba'd al-amdila li kanat li mustakhmal live attenuated virus.
سو so, النوع الاول عندنا كيلد، النوع الثاني عندنا ويكند اللي هو مضعف. النوع الثالث اللي كولد ذا ثيرد تايب از بروتين ساب يونت. بدل rather than introducing whole viruses to immune system a fragment a fragment اللي هو جزء من الفيروس is used to trigger an immune response and stimulate immunity. What do you mean? They only take A fragment of the virus. They فقط يأخذون جزء جزء من الفيروس بحيث has the ability to trigger or to يحفز to simulate the immune response. أمثلة عليها examples include the subunit vaccine against hepatitis B and shingles. اللي هو الهربس. This is called protein subunit. The fourth type is DNA based. The next gene works through introducing viral genetic material, DNA. As you know, most of us studies that there are types, different types of viruses. Some of them have DNA, single DNA, or double strand DNA. Some of them has RNA. Or oh, RNA and DNA, it's called viral genetic material. So they use the viral genetic material that so used to make viral protein that induce a range of immune response types, they can potentially be developed more quickly and easy than other vaccines. So they use the DNA or viral genetic. In the both cases, DNA-based vaccine, RNA-based vaccine, but no DNA vaccines have been approved for human use in both cases. So now we talked about five different types of vaccines. The other four, number six is called replicating viral vector. This involves putting a gene for a viral protein into a different virus. When that will not cause illness, but can replicate. يأخذون البروتين من فيروس المستهدف مثال على COVID-19 يأخذون الجينيتك ماتيريالز ويحطونها في فايرال اخر في فيروس اخر لا يسبب معروف انه ما يسبب امراض فايش راح يحصل؟ راح يحصل ريبليكيشن راح يحصل تضاعف اوف فايرال فيكتور اولسو بروديوسز كابيز يحصل يعمل نسخ زياده اوف ذا فايرال بروتين ويتش تريجر ان اميون ريسبونس تو ذات بروتين اكزامبل عليها ايبولا اند ديو فاكسين الحمى الضنك والايبولا اللي هو معروف الايبولا Is the idea again? What's the idea? They get the genetic materials from one virus or intended virus that causes diseases, and take the genetic materials and put it inside the another virus that non cannot causes any harmful or any diseases. Non-replicating viral, the same idea, but this approach is similar to replicating viral vector vaccine. In that, a viral gene is added to a different non-replicating virus and delivered to the vaccine. The difference between both of these are here non-replicating or does not make uh, copies. So virus-like particles, again, there is another uh, uh, type, virus-like particle vaccine closely resemble viruses but are not infectious because they contain no viral genetic material. They don't have DNA or they don't have RNA. Since uh, a uh, virus-like particle cannot replicate, they provide safer alternative to attenuated viruses and example, Alejandro, HPV vaccine, Other, other vaccines, they are still, they are not categorized yet, but still there is no vaccine has been approval for this type of the vaccine. Now we know there are many types of vaccine. Onaka, at least nine types. vaccines. The most important things, And as a patient, or as a people are waiting for getting the COVID-19 vaccine, what is the best scenario for them? Which type of these vaccines will be best or will be better for them? Each product has its own advantages and disadvantages, and we will likely need more than one vaccine to protect all people around the globe. The best scenario, again, is to have more than one vaccine, one vaccine type. 
بحيث انه اذا الاول كان معطي مفعول درجه معينه يكون النوع الثاني ممكن يكمل معاه او وركن از سينيرجستك اللي هو الـ 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 يكون يعطي عمل اضافي على التايب او النوع الاخر. So this is the best scenario to have more than one type. Last two slides now. I will give you a live example. The first example from the Moderna companies, Sharika Amerikiya, now in trial three. So I will walk you through what they did from the beginning, from the January, from when they decided to work in discovering a, a, a vaccine for the COVID-19. So in January 2020, again, it's the starting date, as you know, they began developing a vaccine. The USA government provided nearly one billion in support. دعموا الشركة الحكومة الأمريكية دعمت الشركة ب بليون مليار علشان تقوم بهذه الأبحاث وتتحمل الخسائر عن الشركة. In March, after two months, the company put the first COVID-19 vaccine into human trials. What do you mean by human trials? This means January, February, it was only preclinicals, tests on animals or in cell culture. So in March, they started the human trials. In July 27, the vaccine has progressed into phase three testing. So how many months now? We are in November. You can have an idea how long we are being waiting now now in November, so for almost three months and a half, still in the phase three. In October, the company announced that they had finished recruiting all 30,000 participants in this study, including 7,000 people 65 years or older. In October, they increased the number of participants and here is the important information. They reported 7,065 years or older. The, one of the challenges, one of the challenges, there are many challenges. One of the challenges of discovering this kind of vaccine or vaccination is the specific group. Who do we mean by specific group? Younger people, youth people, and uh, older people. If the result meet the FDA benchmark, Moderna could potentially apply for an emergency use authorization by the end of 2020. So if they pass, if they get the approval from FDA, the use will be for emergency only by the end of 2020, emergency. Still, public people are not expected to receive the COVID-19 vaccine from Moderna by the end of this year. If somebody asks you, will we get the vaccine from Moderna this year? You can tell them no. It will be, if they get approval, it will be for only the emergency use. In August, what happened in August? The USA government awarded the company an additional 1.5 billion. What deal? What was the deal? In exchange for 100 million doses of the vaccine proved safe and effective. Okay, government will support the, com the company to uh, uh, discover the vaccine, but once they prove that it's safe and effective, they need to give the USA government 100 million doses. Moderna has made similar deals with Canada and Japan. See how countries now supporting the companies, because if they pay money now, 
they will be the first countries to receive the vaccines. Another important example as well, it's from Biotech, Biotech and Pfizer's and Frozen Farmers, a Chinese company. So the German company and then to collaboration with Pfizer and Chinese drug maker, Bosna Pharma. So we have an example of collaboration between a Germany, a Germany and American and Chinese company to discover a vaccine. And uh, you know, it gives you an idea how critical is the topic. So the vaccine to be given into two doses, even if they discover, if, if they are able to make like a hundred billion, a hundred million doses, this mean this would cover only 50 million because each person or each patient will need two doses. In May, they launched a phase one and two trial. This is a good example of combining the phases, phase one and phase two. In July, the companies announced the launch of phase two or three, another combination between phases to speed up, to accelerate the discovering the vaccine. With 30,000 volunteers in the United States and other countries, including Argentina, Brazil, and Germany. Very important. These countries, because they were in clinical trial two or three, and then the clinical trial test, they will be the first countries to receive the vaccine if it's approved, it's safe and uh, efficacy. On September 12, Pfizer and Biotech announced that they would seek to expand their USA trial to 43,000 participants. They increased the number of participants or volunteers. The following month, they gained permission to start testing the vaccine on children. Again, another specific group, as young as 12. That's why I chose these examples, because, you know, they have some, something different from other vaccines or other companies. This considered the first American trial to do so. In summer, the companies began inking deals to deliver large order to countries around the world. They signed. وقعوا اتفاقيات مع دول مع دول اخرى للحصول على الدوزز او حصول على اللقاح لما يجهز. The Trump administration awarded 1.9 billion contract in July for 100 million doses to be delivered by December and the option uh, to acquire 500 million more doses. See? These countries pay money, but once the vaccine is ready, they will be the first countries, the first people to receive these uh, vaccines. Japan as well made a deal for 100 million doses and the European Union arranged to purchase 200 million doses. So if, the, if their vaccine is authorized, let's get approval, Pfizer and Biotech expect to manufacture over 1.3 billion doses of their vaccine worldwide by the end of 2021. This is another Chinese company. Okay, what I want to say here, there is another example when Saudi Arabia, that's what we concern about, Saudi Arabia, they are, doing the clinical trial test with some groups here in Saudi Arabia. This means we fund them, Atanaham money, we try the, uh, the drug or their vaccines here in Saudi Arabia. This means we will be one of the first countries to get the vaccine from this country if it's approved. Last, uh, last slide, inshallah. Uh, it just came uh, when I was doing some reading. This is tomorrow. If, uh, if any of you is interested, this is Medina al Malik Abdullah al Alamiya al Bhat al Tubbiya key mark. It's known as a key mark. Tomorrow they they are doing like a global meeting. They are hosting some very big countries, uh, big companies like uh, and universities like Oxford, AstraZeneca. Johnson & Johnson, Harvard, and NIH, NIH, all of these speakers will be 
you know, uh, 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 tomorrow and uh, after tomorrow, it's free joining for me. I will be intending that because it's great, uh, you know, it will be great uh, opportunities to hear from the uh, the people who are working in the developing the vaccine. فرصة للتحدث أو الاستماع للأشخاص الفعليين القائمين على هذه الأبحاث أو على هذه الفاكسينز أو على هذه الأدوية. And another good things it shows the the effort of Saudi Arabia uh, to be a part or to be a big player in discovering the uh, uh, vaccines for COVID-19. فهو مجاني بكرة إن شاء الله. اللي إذا محتاجينه ممكن هذا العنوان ممكن تدخلون عليه وتشوفونه في تويتر كي مارك. Thanks you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, what you learn uh, from this uh, uh, talk, I hope you learn how vaccine work, what are the phases of vaccine development, how we close to discover a vaccine for COVID-19, what are the different types of vaccines, and thank you very much. أتأسف على الإطالة وأشكر المنظمين وأشكر الحضور وشكرا على الاستماع وأي أسئلة أنا حاضر شكرا جزيلا للجميع رأينا جميعا ما أهمية اللقاح نشكر الدكتور أحمد الضفيري على جهوده القيمة في إعداد هذا المحور وإيصال هذه المعلومات المميزة لدينا موضوع مهم يخص يخص الحضور ولكن قبل ذلك هناك كلمة من الدكتور هاني خوجة وكيل كلية الصيدلة والمشرف على نادي إكسير الصيدلي فلتتفضل مشكورا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته on behalf of the College of Pharmacy and the uh, Elixir Pharmacy Club, I would like to thank uh, the Saudi German Hospital and the Smart Podium for sponsoring this uh, activity. And uh, also my deep thanks uh, to our novel speakers, Dr. Hamad, uh, Dr. Muayyad, and Dr. Ahmed for the uh, uh, very nice, uh, very well prepared uh, lectures they uh, just delivered. And uh, I would like also to thank all the audience. I hope you enjoyed every moment in uh, this activity. And inshallah, in the near future, we will have more and more activities, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. هكذا انتهى مضمون دورتنا لهذا اليوم ولكن هناك مسابقات وجوائز قيمة تنتظركم في حسابنا الرسمي على منصة تويتر حساب نادي إكسير الصيدلي والمسابقة هي عبارة, هي عبارة عن كيس تتحدث عن أزمة معينة وعليها عدة أسئلة وحتى تدخل السحب على الجوائز المقدمة من صيدلية الدواء الراعي الرسمي لنادي إكسير الصيدلي فلتذكروا الإجابات الصحيحة ضمن هاشتاغ أدر أزمتك وبقية التفاصيل والشروط سوف تكون مذكورة في حساب النادي وبالختام أتمنى بأني وفقت بما قدمته والإشراف على هذه الدورة مع فريق العمل المميز متمنين من الله عز وجل أن يكون محتوى دورتنا لهذا اليوم قد نال على إعجابكم أعتذر على الإطالة في أمان الله